Almost 60 years ago, I was one of nine members of the American Socialist Workers' Party who were expelled for opposing the unprincipled reunification of the party with the Pabloite revisionists. The recruitment of Helen and comrades like her became a tremendous vindication of our fight. She contributed powerfully to the continuity of American Trotskyism and to its tremendous development over the subsequent decades. It is not the slightest exaggeration to say that Helen educated and inspired many thousands of workers and youth in the course of her organizing efforts, her public speaking, her leadership in political exposures of capitalist oppression, and the building of the Revolutionary Party. Some of the uh, adjectives uh, used to describe her in uh, comments on the recent tribute and the in the uh, World Socialist website were boundless drive and insight, compassion, humor, kindness, steadfastness. These are only some of the words that could be used to describe her. Her impact was most crucially felt within the vanguard of the working class itself, the Revolutionary Party. Every party member knew Helen, and many outside the party knew her as well. She was indefatigable, outspoken, fearless, and forthright. And at the same time, she was patient and thoughtful, especially when dealing with the objective problems of the development of the working class, her class, our class. The other phrase that immediately comes to mind when describing Helen is revolutionary optimism based upon a scientific understanding of the revolutionary role of the working class. She never simply gave in. She fought to the best of her ability. She was resourceful and persistent in fighting to solve all manner of problems, whether organizational or political. Helen was an internationalist to the core. She joined the Trotskyist movement as our original tribute in the World Socialist website a few days ago explained in the struggle against petty bourgeois nationalism, whether of the black nationalist variety of the Panthers or the third world nationalism that was, that was prevalent and very much a part of the new left ideology when she joined the Trotskyist movement. She joined in 1971 precisely on the basis of internationalism. And that is attested to at, at this meeting itself with the long list of speakers from many different corners of the globe. I worked with Helen over a period of many years and she quickly became not only a comrade, but also a pr very precious friend. She paid me a visit for a couple of days to help out after I broke my leg about a dozen years ago here in New York. I was also on the receiving end of her hospitality even more times, staying with her on many occasions when I came to Michigan for meetings. I had the opportunity on those occasions to observe as Jamal became a teenager and then a young man. I had the privilege of running alongside Helen in the 1992 presidential campaign as the Workers League's vice presidential candidate working with her on an almost daily basis for a good part of that year. After the launching of the World Socialist website 25 years ago, Helen and I collaborated in writing on several occasions, especially in connection with the history of the civil rights struggle, the fight against Jim Crow segregation, the lessons of the civil rights battles of the 1950s and 60s, the successes but more profoundly, the inability of this movement under middle class leadership, even of the most, the more radical wing personified by Martin Luther King, to solve the fundamental issues facing the African American working class and the working class as a whole. Rather, as we have pointed out on many occasions, integration reforms, the integration reforms only posed more sharply than ever the questions of the class struggle. Jobs, housing, education, healthcare, culture, none of this could be secured without the fight to overthrow the outmoded capitalist system and build a socialist society. 
Helen often wanted to discuss my experiences, especially in the SWP and in the early struggle against its reunification with the Pavlovites, and also as the only US comrade old enough to have participated actively in the earlier days of the mass civil rights movement between 1960 and 1965. We discussed the experiences of the lunch counter protests, the King-led mass movement in the South, the role of the Black Muslims and of Malcolm X, the rise and decline of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. I worked together with Helen about 10 years ago on a Marxist review of Michelle Alexander's book, The New Jim Crow, with its false claim that nothing fundamental had changed in the past 100 years. This book became the pattern for the 1619 Project and the whole ruling class campaign to revive nationalism in recent years to divide the working class. In addition, much more recently, Helen and I worked together on the review of Judas and the Mac Black Messiah, the film of two years ago that shed some light despite its serious limitations on the struggles of the 1960s. We also worked together on a review of a significant film on Nina, Nina Simone, the well-known jazz singer referred to by Barbara in her earlier remarks. Helen's hostility to black nationalism and identity politics went hand in hand with a very serious interest on her part in the history of the struggle against slavery and Jim Crow, the history of the struggles of the working class, black as well as white. When I wrote on these subjects, including cultural matters like the Harlem Renaissance and figures such as African-American painter Jacob Lawrence, Helen was particularly interested and she did, she did some of her own writing in addition to the articles I have mentioned, as in the important article on Ebonics, the reactionary claim that the dialect imposed in part by poverty and segregation was somehow a separate language. Many of my own articles were influenced as well by suggestions from Helen, as with the article just, I believe, last year on the new opera about Emmett Till, attacked by the nationalists because one of its creators was white. Comrade Helen passed through all the seminal moments in the history of the US and world Trotskyism in the past 52 years. She learned quickly and soon became a part of the leadership of the Workers' League in the early 1970s. She participated in such turning points for the party as the struggle posed by the desertion of Tim Woolforth and his abrupt rejoining of the Pavlovite Socialist Workers' Party, the clearest proof that he had taken the road of earlier renegades, such as the Chakmanites and Cochranites, only much faster. This was followed by security in the Fourth International. The party centers moved to the Midwest. Helen helped to anchor and steal the party cater when we faced the assassination, the political assassination of one of our young leaders, Tom Henehan, in 1977. As she developed politically and theoretically, she was also connected, that was also indissolubly connected to such campaigns as that for the freedom of Gary Tyler in Destrehan, Louisiana, as comrades have already referred to. Helen's internationalism was tested in connection with the struggle led by Comrade North and the split with the national opportunists and leadership of the British Workers' Revolutionary Party in the 1980s. She passed that test along with the unanimous cater of the Workers' League. She recognized and fought the disease of Pavlovite revisionism, and thereby participated in the inauguration of what we have described as the fourth stage of the Trotskyist movement. Following the early years of the left opposition, the founding of the Fourth International, and then the founding of the International Committee 15 years later in 1953. This all laid the basis for the achievements of the international movement in the subsequent decades. Helen's rich legacy as a leading member of the Trotskyist movement can only be fully grasped, as Kamar Tomas has just explained, in fact, 
when it is placed against the fact that the last four decades, or actually more than four, have been a period of social counter-revolution, of reaction, of the transformation of all the old workers' organizations into adjuncts of the capitalist state. The greatest development of revolutionary theory often takes place during such periods. Helen understood that we must prepare for the next revolutionary wave. This preparation involves not simply standing pat, so to speak, but developing the theory and practice of Marxism in the bitterest struggle, in the class struggle itself, and in the struggle, the ideological struggle, against those who capitulated, the pseudo-left, and all those hangers-on, which is exactly what we have done and are doing today. On the World Socialist website, in the analysis of the crisis and collapse of Stalinism, and the deepening economic crisis and decline of American and world capitalism, and more recently with the COVID-19 pandemic, the upsurge of the class struggle, the danger of fascism, the gathering storm clouds of a third world war right now expressed in the genocide in Gaza. The next revolutionary wave is upon us, and the International Committee in the fifth stage of the world Trotskyist movement taking the boldest initiatives, is building the revolutionary leadership. We must understand and base ourselves upon the enormous contributions that Comrade Helen Halyard made in her 52 years of conscious political life as a Trotskyist in the Trotskyist movement, the revolutionary Marxism of the 21st century. Thank you, comrades.